Welcome back to the morning show here on Arise News. After several years of massive expansion focused largely on changing its demographics, in the aftermath of the Oscar So White Opera, the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences on Thursday returned to a smaller list of invitations for new members. The 2021 class consists of 46% women, 39% underrepresented ethnic and racial communities, and 53% international from 50 countries. Nigerian filmmakers Ramzi Noah, Moabudu, and Andrew Dosumu are the Nigerians selected for the class of 2021. Ramzi, who was listed under the actor's category for his roles in the movie 76, and the figurine is here to speak on his selection and more. Well, good morning, Mr. Noah. Good morning, OG. <laughs> it's a great pleasure to be here. It's good to see you again. Yeah, well, likewise. Big congratulations Thank to you. you. Congratulations. I remember Thank the, you, Mr. Steve. Yeah, <laughs> I remember the last time you were on Arise 360 when we yes. interviewed you, you were working on a, 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 the movie Living in Bondage, which really you know, broke the box office. Yes. Which, which he directed. Yes, which he directed, <laughs> yes. Congratulations on both. First of all, tell us how you received the news and how you feel right now. Um, I absolutely feel exhilarated by the news, of course. I'm so I'm still yet to get my head under, like, <laughs> like to be all um, proper about it, because otherwise I would probably just go <laughs> hit the ceiling if I could. But yeah, I, I wasn't expecting it, in all honesty. I, I don't know how it came. It just sprung up on me. Someone just called me and said, oh, look, you've been selected. I'm like, uh-oh, uh what happened, you know? And I'm, I'm trying to wrap my head around it because I don't know the details of it all. So I had to start making inquiries like, oh, God, what am I supposed to do, really? Because <laughs> like, it took me unawares, absolutely. But in all honesty, um, I'm actually very, very happy. It's, it's, like, um, it's like, you know, um, so far so good, like a deserving thing for, you know, for the years on ending, like, you know, and I'm, and I'm, it's going to open doors. This I very well know. So I see, I see a lot of great things happening for us more in the future. And that's all I've ever dreamt of. Like, that's where I want the, the, the industry to go. Well deserved, Ramsey. Thank you. That's a good one. I, I mean, um, this is coming at a time that we're on the music side celebrating Burner Boy. Burner Boy. Celebrating yes. Weezy. For the yes. We haven't won the Oscar yet. Mm -hmm. But then we have people like your good selves you know, now being invited, you know, to be on the academy. Yeah. Before you immortalized is there, has been mm -hmm, there, mm -hmm. Genevieve, mm -hmm. Femi Dubemi, mm -hmm. you know, a few other names. Mm -hmm. I mean, that says something about the fact that the Oscars are truly expanding True. and expanding beyond just being white, mm -hmm. you know, which has been a concern. Mm -hmm. It means that people like you will now be able to vote. Beyond that, what are the things that your industry, our industry, should begin to think of in terms of having a, you know, food closer to the Oscar doors. I know that Lionheart was two years ago, you know, tried, couldn't get in. Uh, the Milk Maid last year, I guess, tried, you know, at least for the first time we were there. Mm -hmm. I mean, now that you're a voting member, mm -hmm. this means that you will at least have a better understanding of the types of films or movies that they need. How would that help us? Um, wow, it's, it's, the journey in Nigeria is kind of like pretty tough for us filmmakers, honestly. Mm -hmm. uh, the, diversity, the diversity is just so much. It's very high that it's hard to like, um, you know, like you have a trickle down effect to where, you know, the direction that we're going. So it's pretty tough. Mm -hmm. When we sit back and we try to write the story out and see, okay, what probably will make an impact or will leave an impact or what would... Um, be become a uh, 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 strong that has a uh, viable um, international presence, it's pretty tough. Mm. So it's almost like we need to find something extremely and absolutely indigenous, yeah. you know, yeah. uh, rather than, you know, looking at the international side. Because that's what the Oscars is all about anyways. Mm. They're, not, they're not looking at you trying to become them. No. They want you to be you. So it's like now we're trying to make art. So we think in the direction of, okay, what is it that the Nigerians like? What are, 
What's their way of life? What's their lifestyle? And how do I apply that to my filmmaking, my writing, you know? And that's where we are. We are the verge of that. So it's pretty tough. I can't give you like a definite answer that yeah. this is what it's going to be, you mm -hmm. know? But I know that there's going to be a whole co um, a lot of trial and errors that will finally get us to our destination. That's right. And that's where we are. That's right. When you say indigenous, I mean, the movies that you were selected for us, like 76 yes, and, and the figurine, figurine. Yes. I would call that truly indigenous movies we take 76 for for example i mean mm -hmm. the the era the, the the whole cast the the the, the 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 everything that encompasses that movie yeah is definitely an oscar worthy movie what do you think went wrong there or why do you think that they wouldn't select a movie like 76 at uh, the point that it was released i i have no idea whatsoever i don't know i i don't know it's hard to tell but one thing I know for certain, at the time 76 came out, 2016, um, uh, were we viable for the, for, for the uh, language Oscars at the time or the Oscars? I, I'm not certain. I'm not certain that we were. Likewise, Figurine. Figurine had some language in it, correct? Yes, yes, But 76 did. did not. Did not, yes. So that could have been... It could reason. be. It could also mean that I think also that... It needed to make a groundbreaking um, um, presence in our country, you know, on okay. our shores. Okay. You know, I'm thinking that's probably another factor. You know, they they want to see that. Okay, if you do, do your people patronize your your films? Mm. Do, is it as strong? You know, if you make it indigenous, like if I made a Yoruba Hausa or Igbo, whichever one, is it strong? Did it carry as much weight within yours before we now look into it and say, okay, it's good enough for international too? Yeah. You know, because these things, I think they all add up, you know, to, to, to get their final result. Okay. And I'm sure everything also boils down to finances, correct? Oh, now, yeah. Now, now, Absolutely. <laughs> now we have, you know, uh, giants like uh, Netflix, Netflix and yes. obviously Arise Play now. Yes. Supporting your industry. Mm -hmm. how, what do you think um, would happen in the future with that type of support? And is that type of support enough? Um, the support is good. The support is very important and is helping right right now. It's supporting us in every way possible. Here's the thing. It's, um, nobody wants to support or be part of something that they are not sure of a success or, you know, see like a good, um, um, you know, light down the tunnel, you know. So, and that's determined by, for instance, the platforms that we use to market our movies, you know. So there's been some variance, you know, the trajectory of Nollywood, the start of to where we are right now. Let's talk about not the making of the contents right now, but let's talk about the distribution of the content. And we had, you know, DVDs, VCDs, VHS, DVDs, and then came cinema. And now we're going online platforms, right? Now, where we are, for instance, Netflix, there's not, we don't have enough subscriber base for Netflix in Nigeria, and that's quite poor, you know? And I, I don't, I'm not blaming the people, but I'm blaming the system, for instance, when it comes to the data, because I know it's, that's the problem. We don't have enough um, um, data, you know, internet to, to be able to get good streaming online for these things. And that's where the problem is. Until that is cleared, then you can be certain of a very good, strong subscriber base. And then, yes, of course, Netflix, because that's how they do business. They'll tell you, it's based on your subscriber base that we can... Um, um, give you what the kind of funding that you know that you you deserve. So hopefully, let's just see that. Um, like I said, trial and error. We just keep putting it together and then find a bearing somewhere along the line. What, what was the transition like for you from a lead actor who has won all the awards? You know, uh, out there? <laughs> have I? <laughs> <laughs> Starting from Mama to all. The, I mean, I, yeah. I, I, I know what you've done, and, and you've done very well. Um, Thank so you, sir. transitioning, you're welcome, from um, a great actor to a director, who also, by the way, you know, won a war with your debut, you know, fame. I'm asking this in relation to um, being invited to be on the, on the Oscar voting, you know, committee, uh, because just like you referenced it, um, the key area through which we can get in there is the international Lang international film category, which, mm -hmm. which used to be the foreign language mm -hmm. film. Mm -hmm. um, as an actor and as a director, it will mean that uh, a good chunk of the content of the dialogue mm -hmm. will have to be uh, in the local language, oh, a yeah. non-English uh, <laughs> language. <laughs> True. For you to, you know, to get in there. Yeah. Um, 
Is our industry ready for that? Are you ready for that as an actor and as a director? Oh, like I said, it's a very sensitive one. Mm. It's absolutely sensitive. So, um, for instance, let's use a, um, an example like Parasite, you know, the yeah. South Korean film that, yes. you know, caught at the awards uh, in 2019. Now, when I saw that, I saw originality in all totality. Absolutely. I did. It was bewildering just to see that, wow, this could actually beat some very freaking good Hollywood films. Mm -hmm. And when I came back home and I thought, where is that kind of opening of, no matter how tiny that kind of opening is in our filmmaking, in our storytelling, mm. it was hard to find. Like I said, there's a lot of diversity. Yeah. And, 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 but that doesn't stop the fact that we can't do it. Yes, we can. And there, there are so many things that I, I weighed in my head, you know, when I look. Now, and then to be in all honesty and in all fairness, my, my, um, my case study of film right now, it's actually South Koreans, you know. Uh, yes, I started off with Hollywood and I seen that, OK, it's not really cutting, that, cutting it with Nigerian. Then I went to Bollywood, Indian. And, and for some reason, it's still not cutting it with Nigeria. But then I sat down with the South Koreans and I noticed what it is. I said, you see, Nigerians are very fashion inclined lifestyle. They, they had people who want to be in the, you know, the, the, for, the forefront of things happening around the world. So that's them. So guess what? The only problem is the language. Mm. So imagine me put our fashion, you know, and not necessarily because that's what it is. You see, the Indians, they have their local fashion. And they will use that. So the Indians are very, very good with their tradition, culture, and language in their films, right? And that's how they make it happen. Now, we don't have that kind of fashion. Our fashion is more like uptown kind of fashion, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. it's, it's more like very influenced by the English culture, very influenced by the English culture. It's the same thing with the South Koreans. But then South Koreans don't play with their language. South Koreans speak their language. That's right. But you see, they have the, the English um, fashion still, but then and they were still able to cut even. So that's my case study. And I discovered that I think that would be the way to go with us. Yeah. All right, Ramsey, so, um, we'll have to ask you to hold your thought there while we go on a short break. It's Thank still you. the morning show on our right news. We'll be back shortly. Welcome back to The Morning Show. Still with us is actor and director Ramsey Noah, who has just been invited to join the Academy of Motion Pictures, Arts and Sciences. Thank you for sticking with us. Well, before we went on a break, you were talking about the challenges our diversity pose mm -hmm. uh, in making films. Mm -hmm. Now, I was saying that, you know, you as a Yoruba man, you're a Yoruba, correct? Yeah. Um, you know, why don't you embr Tukumbo. <laughs> Tukumbo. <laughs> embrace that language and push that forward? Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, what is the challenge there? Um, well, it, the only challenge I see is probably marketing. It's nothing more. It's because it, right now, Nigerians are inclined to, you know, tradition and culture very strongly. So before you do something that is not their language and expect to sell it to them for it, for you to have an appeal, you have to do your very strong homework, you know. When we did live in bondage, we had an issue in the Western, in the Western cinemas, you know, that I had to actually um, go on social media and then try and promote living bondage in Yoruba. I had to say, okay, hey Joe, hello, baby, we're living in bondage. <laughs> <laughs> it's in the cinemas just around the corner. You know, I had to so do that. So when you that. say Western market, you mean southwest of Nigeria? Yes. Really? Yes, yes, yes. Oh. So it, because they felt like it's an evil film and, you know, uh, so they didn't bother. And it, it's normal. So the, as you can tell, you knew, we need a bit of push. And then when, once it has an appeal, you know, and um, uh, the art is it's there, it, it, irrespective of language, it ministers or it cuts to them then it's a good sale. And that's a gradual process, like I said. It's gonna take us a bit to get there, but we will surely get there. Hmm. Yeah. Will, will that therefore be the reason why um, movies, Nigerian films and English um, happen to do better, I suppose, you know? Yeah. Um, because you can you know, freely take it everywhere, you know, take it to everybody. Sure. 
I guess so. That's that's probably the reason why it does a whole lot better. Well, but foreign language movies always do well in their various um, countries, yeah. as well as in the Oscars, that's right? right? <laughs> so now Even that's at festivals. Yes. Really. Yes. Yeah. So now that's left for the filmmakers. Right. Now they, <laughs> that's where the problem is. So the filmmaker has to make sure that making film is not about dialogue, particularly. Yeah. It's about universal communication. Yeah. So basically, my my movie should have an appeal to a universal audience. Mm. Pro production, production values. Production value, um, not just production value, but you know, your your interpretation of um, characters and mm. arts and everything that's mm. all inclusive in the filmmaking that needs to have the international appeal or universal appeal. Mm. Like you know, they will tell you um, filmmaking is universal, meaning that it doesn't matter where you right. where you're from, but whatever location it is, a language, it should have an appeal to virtually everybody. You mm. know. And that's where I'm saying that it's now left for the cinematographers in Nigeria, or filmmakers, sorry, in Nigeria, to work on that. That's, that's one strong work they need to work on. But one of the things that's cutting them short still is that nobody wants to invest in that kind of project for a, tr uh, for a test run. Mm. And nobody wants to drop that kind of money and, uh, and it doesn't make the money back or mm. capital invested back and you're not a talk of profit. And nobody wants to throw that away. That's why it's, it's pretty slow. So that's why if you notice that most of the filmmakers are just gravitating towards um, doing what you call the, the inf they infuse a bit of these things into their films these days, mm. a bit of language, a bit of, you know, art, you know, a bit of all of that stuff. It's coming slowly so that you create that um, um, uh, followership, you know, people beginning to like what you're doing and then till we finally get to that complete stage of universal filmmaking. Mm. Now, how would you say this invitation into the Academy would influence Nollywood as a whole? I believe that, you know, it, it was it's you, Genevieve, and Omotola that are the indigenous actors that have, you know, yeah. been added yeah. into this, um, yeah. uh, into the Academy. Yes. How would you say that it would influence it in the um, um, You know, first, it will be that, okay, uh, for our industry, basically, we can have influence and, in, you know, telling most of our filmmakers what the requirements are to um, do Oscar nominated films, you know, and, you know, get into the categories of all the stuff. You can inform people. You can tell filmmakers what it will take to achieve that. You can tell filmmakers um, um, what the budgets will be like, you know. And, of course, the fact that we have people like that, when you have global filmmakers, you know, from around the world want to come to Africa or Nigeria, they'll realize that, oh, we have uh, notable uh, figures or personalities who have international recognition mm. from Oscars, and then they'll come, they'll go through that channel to, to, you know, to do their works and stuff like that, you know. Basically, for, I think it's an opening for not just us to go on the international scale, you know, um, not like we're not on the international scale, don't get me wrong, but, you know, uh, should I say... I mean, you're on Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I was meant like a structural, yes, formal international. Uh, so it, it's going to create that opening and it's going to create that um, awareness also for the industry and what to do. And hopefully, hopefully one of these days, by God willing, that will probably bring the Oscars home too. Yeah, we, we, we can can't wait. That. We can't yeah, wait. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, wouldn't that just be so great? That, that's we, why he said, have I really won all the awards? I think that's why you <laughs> I, know, I right? think that's <laughs> where you were going. That's, that was where I was going. Yeah. South Africa <laughs> will do it with yes. Totsi. Yes. Totsi, yeah. They, they to be exactly. at home, I know, really. I know, you I know. know. And, and the, uh, and the industry is big enough. I mean, it's, it's, it's about 30 years already uh, looking yeah. at, you know, the new Nigerian cinema that Nollywood, you know, represents, you mm -hmm. know. So... Um, we've, we've done practice. I mean, we've gone everywhere, you know, the black world, the diaspora, yep. you know, now Oscar is inviting us. So the next big deal really will be to make that kind of a theme that will sell our home yep. while at the same time bring back, you know, I, I, I tend to compare what, you know, what has been done in Hollywood and like in music to, to football. Mm. You can't say that, um, you have a, a great local league mm. good with good footballers, etc. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And you don't want to go to the World Cup or oh, to yeah. the Olympics <laughs> I know, or right? to African Cup of Nations. I know. You know, do all you can here, you know, to have a strong industry, but then mm -hmm. go out there and compete 
and win, speak the language that they understand. Wow. That's what I think. You yes. know? In my mind, I remember when uh, Burna Boy won the, the Grammys. <laughs> like, oh my God. Finally. Now all eyes is going to be on Nollywood. <laughs> and you guys better and then, bring all the and then, and then guess what? Like, like what? A couple of months after now, it's just a score like, Ramsey, all right, come on, come board. On, come, on, board. come join the Oscars. I'm like, oh my. Like, God, do our prayers. Because immediately I knew when Burna won it, everything that just came to me was like, Everyone's going to be saying, Nollywood, Seb, make that Seb, go pick Oscars now. <laughs> Do something, guys. What's wrong with you? I knew all eyes would be on us. And strangely, look at what happened. So, yes, I am really happy. I'm totally happy about this. Yes. Well, this brings me... Go yeah. ahead. Please. Because I wanted to say you're also involved in a new trend in Nollywood, which yeah. is very commendable. Um, great themes of the past are now being remade. You, you've done Living in Bondage. You've yeah. done Rattlesnake. Yeah. Um, there are few other, you know, filmmakers who are doing the same thing. And I think that's acceptable all over the world. Yeah. Something of quality, a blast from the past. Yeah. You know, remake it. Who says that a film that was made 30 years ago in English cannot be redone in Igbo? Or yeah. Amsa, or Yoruba, for example. Wow. And then open doors for it. Let it, let it travel. Let it fly. True. So, I mean, I wanted to commend you on that and to Thank say that you. that could be an opportunity. You know, that... that, that it happens. was, it was um, myself and Charles Okpaleke, the, um, my, my producer... Sorry, my executive producer. We, we were very concerned about losing the originals of, of Nollywood. It was like it was dying down. Like you couldn't go get those films and watch them again because the quality is really bad. And technology has nothing, no way to revamp them or you know, align them in a way where people will see them and really appreciate them these days. So we thought, besides them being fantastic stories at a mm -hmm. time, that connected with, all, with, the, with us, we thought it was important that we try to do, you know, um, remakes or sequels yeah. and stuff like that, just to revamp them. Yeah. And these stories were very strong stories that connected with the, <laughs> the, my executive producer a whole lot. Mm. There's some um, scenarios in the movies that had a direct um, connection with him and his life. Mm. So yeah, he was kind of like, um, um, attached to them, the stories. Wow, so wow, why not? Wow. Like, fine. And I was very, very, I was very, very happy. You know, when we when we did Live It in Bondage, and when I did it, I I I never believed that it was going to be such groundbreaking. I never mm. believed that it was going to cut that good. You yeah. know, because even while I was there and while the premiere, I was just looking and watching because all my mind is like. I just wanted to see a reaction of people, what they think about it. Yeah. Would they like it? Did it make sense? Yeah. If that's the case, then I'm good. I was just, I was just yeah. happy. Yeah. So, yeah. And, uh, and you're making more. You're making more. And, yes. and the box office has been doing well with those uh, two. It is Remix. Rattlesnake and yes. it is uh, Living in Bondage. That's and right. Would, did we did NECA. Did NECA did pretty mm -hmm. Yes. Did you do that? How did that do in the box office? Well, not badly, too. Yeah, it did, okay, yeah, it did fairly good. Yes, well, it did you know, fairly well. We're but, going to uh, go on a short break now, Ramsey. Sure. And when we come back, we'll continue with the uh, actor and director, Ramsey Noah, on the morning show. Stay with us. Trending on a rise play. Quiz is about a couple called Charles and Diana Ingram, who both went on the show Who Wants to Be a Millionaire in 2001, and he was convicted of cheating. Inside, Ingram is to hear claims that he teamed up with a coughing accomplice to cheat his way to the £1 million jackpot on hit quiz show Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. I really enjoyed it. It's very entertaining, it's very witty, it's very quick, it's very sharp. That'll be up to you to see whether you think they're innocent or guilty. Ready to play? Exclusively on Arise Play. Download the app and subscribe to join a bold new world of entertainment. Arise Play. Beyond streaming.
Welcome back to The Morning Show. We're still with actor and director Ramzan Noah, who's been sharing how elated he's been uh, to be invited uh, to join the Academy of Motion Pictures, Arts and Sciences. Now, Ramsey, before we went on a break, we were discussing um, Rattlesnake and the box office sales. Before we uh, move further, we have a short clip of Rattlesnake. I'd like for us to play that uh, before we uh, continue. What else is there to live for? The world is a brutal place to live. The leaders use the common man for their selfish gain. How do you even sleep at night, mother? The politics of this world, the rich gets richer, and the poor, poorer. I was going to live life on my own terms and let the chips for where they may. We target, we plan, we execute. Daddy, school fees, can't you? Hey, hey. You don't mean it! We are cooking. Fuck it. I'm in! Where is my money? I love it. Can I just tell you my favorite part? Yeah. School fees, can sure. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Gucci. Just tell us quickly about this film and how it did in the box office, really. Well, um, the film, we had issues, well, because we filmed during COVID. You yes. Know, um, we, we felt that, you know, we could manipulate it at the time because we felt like, okay, the COVID thing is not as bad as it seems or should be. We didn't, re we didn't see the problems, you know, that we're going to face. So we thought, okay, let's go ahead, you know. And then we had plans to do stuff. For instance, it's supposed to be originally, you know, I should give um, major kudos to the original story owner, which is Amaka Igwe. She's a, one of the greatest minds that came out of mm. Nollywood, that started Nollywood. Mm. And when she did the, uh, the, the original Rattlesnake at the time, it was um, one of the best movies. In fact, it was like the best movies, uh, movie at the time in Nollywood. So kudos to her. May her gentle soul rest in peace. She's passed on. Amen. Um, however, when I took, when, when myself and um, Charles Palake took on this, it was like, okay, fine. We need to make it, you know, even more intense, you know, more action, you know, um, um, driven. But... Then COVID happened <laughs> and we couldn't do a whole lot of action because we already contracted some um, um, stunt people all the way from South Africa to help with some of the drive stunts and so many things that we're going to do. But unfortunately, they couldn't come down. There was no flight wow. and we were just stranded here. And then on set, we just had to tweak, you know, whatever we could from the script to get the best, because we had a release date on in the cinemas already, and there's no way we could like um, change that. That's why we came up with something that was more, instead of action, it's more now drama-driven, you know, and performance-driven, more like. Mm -hmm. Which Ramsey are we going to see more of these days? The actor or the director? I was going to say Richard Williams. <laughs> 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 yeah, well... Um, more these days, it's hard to tell. I, mm. I swing both ways. Mm. Right now, I'm actually working with Mo, you know. Okay. Yeah, the lady Mo on a, a new project, you your know. Co your colleague on the Oscar committee yeah. now. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so we're working together on a major, as an actor, yeah. you know. So I'm still there as an actor. And I think um, my strength, even as a director, is more like an actor's director kind of okay. director. That's what I am. Mm. Um, that, so I, I channel, you know, put any energy in both sides, you know, if either I'm acting or I'm directing. It, to me, it's all the same. I think it's all the same creative ho 
a hub, you know, mm. and I, I, I don't try to dabble into mm. being a producer mm. or going to the productions, I mean, producing side of things, because I think that's a bit more of, you know, producers are the... Look for the money. Uh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> They're the connects between the creative and the business, yeah. you know. And I hate being there, you know. Even mm. when I say, you know what I'm saying, you can't help it. You have to ask, no, 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 whatever it is, That's not my don't, job. yeah. yeah. No. Mm. So I just try to remain the creative side. And then I think that's really what Nollywood needs mm. strongly. Mm. Um, one thing that I, in my opinion, I've seen in Nollywood is that it's surface. You know, the performance and the art is very surface. Mm. It's not deep. You can't, mm. you, you don't have longevity with most of our films because you can tell it's all, it, it's like fleeting. Just performance and then it's all finished, it's done, it's gone, it. yeah. And the performances are not from inside. You know, you're looking at the actors and you can't tell, you know, that the, the, the characters they are playing, they, they don't internalize it as best this as they can. This is a should. deep critique from yeah. a practitioner. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, so, so when you are behind the camera, yeah. And you are directing, you know, um, upcoming actors or even established actors yeah. who sometimes will be like, oh, what's, what's Ramsey doing? He doesn't like it. <laughs> How do you try to change, you know, what obtains? How do you try to get the best out of the people that you direct? Um, I, when I communicate with them, because yeah. what I do most importantly is like I try to relate with them on the actors because I understand what they go through, you mm -hmm. know. I could feel them, I feel their pain. Mm -hmm. So when I discuss with producers, I always tell them, you don't know what you've, mm. what you've made this guy. He, he, he does, this person you've created now does not have a life of his own. Mm. He's now popular, he's out there in the eye, in the beck and call of everybody. He has to be like a servant to virtually everybody, mm. you know. And you've taken that away from him. So the best you can do is try to appreciate him at every point in time you can. So when I deal with actors, I'm a bit more subtle. Um, um, and then pleading, <laughs> more like. And then I discovered something also that most times I, I tend to let them watch, you know, immediate oh, oh, rushes so. of, yeah, oh, of their performance. Okay. And, you know, if I watch, I don't like it, I tell them, you know, come, come see it. What do you think? What do you think about what you've done right now? I was thinking if you had tried it this way or that way, it would have been. So all of that, it's, uh, it's very mutual. So I'm, I engage my actors in a more uh, cordial, endearing um, atmosphere that they, they look out to want to give me the best. Mm. Yes, yeah, so mm. that's what I do. And how is that for you? It feels like you, it will be impossible for you to take yourself away from directing as an actor when you have been employed to be an actor. Yes, and have you true. been juggling both? I, I feel like, I agree. you know, it's like you're acting, but in your head you're directing the yes. scene that yeah. you're acting at yes. the same I know, time. I know what you mean. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Yeah. I, I, I tend to, I tend to have to co really constrain myself most times when I'm <laughs> supposed to be an actor on set on somebody else's set, yeah. and I'm seeing the director doing something, I'm like, why did you try this? Why did you, why yeah. did you try that? You, you, need to, you need to hold yourself back there. So you know what? Just shut it. You know, the, I try to put a barrier, you know. I try. It's hard. Don't get me wrong. It's pretty hard to put a barrier between that, being the director and an actor. So what I do is when it's an actor, so I go through the character Bible and I, I, I try to imbibe it as best as I can, mm -hmm. understudy as, as best as I can, and I go there with that. But as a director, I swing both ways. Mm -hmm. You see, if I was directing, I go into being an actor and a director at the same time. It's easier for me. Right. Besides, if I'm directing, it's my shots, my call. But if I'm just an actor on the set, that's where I try to put, you know, to shut it, you know, put the shutters on, like, okay, shut off the director's side and just focus on the acting side. And that's what I do. And you've been successful in doing that. So far, you? well, I mean, <laughs> it's not like it's been so much, yeah. you know, from my directorial debut till now, not like I've done too much right. um, acting on the side for other directors yet. I have, but... What, what would you say has been your most challenging role? I had seen you the first time in the movie called Dangerous Twins. Yes. And yes. I thought that was that's, such that's, that's a, a brilliant film, right? movie. That's yeah. right. right? Tadio 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 yes. Absolutely. I thought that was such a brilliant movie. You had to pay, play Pitch two Pitch characters, yeah. two totally different characters. Taiwan, Taiwan. Taiwan. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, would you say that would be one of your most challenging films? or? Um, <sighs> Oof, it yes, was. it was. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, at the time we were filmed, it was 2004, stroke 2006, there about. Yeah. At the time we filmed, it was the first of its kind in Nigeria at the time to play a dual role yeah, in a movie. That's right. Even technicalities was pretty tough. Ntade was the only one that could pull it through. 
So when I'm, when I'm on set, they'll tell me, you act and you do everything here. Yeah, you run the lines to an, to an empty space. <laughs> and then you, you go to the other side and run the other lines to an empty space. Now technology has fine-tuned all of that and made it a whole lot easier. Then it wasn't easy. We could shoot just um, a, a scene where we have these dual characters. Mm. Sometimes it takes study like two, three days. <laughs> like a day to like three days for just a scene. Wow. Yes, it was that, you know, very demanding. And when I was on set, I found it challenging. I loved it. I loved every bit of it. But um, at the same time, I, I felt like, oh my God, C can I do this again? It was really hard. Because I remember, I remember when I, somebody else called me a couple of years after to want to do a twin role. And I told him, well, no, first, I'm going to charge you. <laughs> I'm going to charge you for two, for for two, two roles. roles. <laughs> you know? Exactly. And then charge you for this and that. that, that. It's like, ah, uh, and then I never got to do it. Because it's quite tough. I would love to see a remake of that. Dangerous. Oh, my. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my. Absolutely. Yes. I'm sure Tadio Guido is listening. <laughs> I'm sure he did, is. Did any director inspire you, either locally mm -hmm. or internationally, now that you are very well seated on the director seat? Oh, yes, of course. Mm. Um, Locally, I have, I have a couple, mm. you know, I, I am a fan, I'm a major fan of um, Tadeo Gita, mm. Izu Ojuku. Izu. Um, I, I'm, I'm trying to get our local directors right now that thrill me. Oh. You always work with Kunle Afolai or oh, somehow. You see, that's how, I was just going to come there. I said, yeah. I, I didn't want to remind you. <laughs> I was just going to say. I'm like... One of my best movies ever, in, you know, Till Tomorrow is the figure in. Yeah. And when Kulik brought me the script and said, look, we're doing this movie and we're doing it for the cinemas, it was the first of its kind. Because mm. there at the time, there was no movie in the cinemas. Okay. Yeah. No local content no, in cinemas. No. So it was first to break. But um, Stephanie uh, beat us to it with um, Behind the Glass. It was a yeah. movie. She, she went yes. before us, you know, because um, Kulik was taking his time to get the best of, you know, doing that film. And guess what? We only shot about 70% of the script. Really? Yes. And, and yeah, because there was a whole lot of issues, but yeah. we're able to put patch it together and he was able to achieve that much. Even when I watch it, even when I still watch it, because it's on Netflix, so every time I watch it, I still feel like, wow, sort of, you could see the art in it. And you only shot 70%. Arty. Yeah. 70 uh, maybe that's why script. I didn't make it to the Oscars. <laughs> 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 Who knows? No, no, now, really quickly, no. can you tell us what is next for you yes. in terms of collaboration with these other um, artists that have been invited uh, into the uh, motion picture art? Uh, of Apart from, apart from what you're doing with Mo. Apart from what you're doing, Apart from, I, I am also in talks with Netflix over some titles okay. and... Uh, we're going to let the cat out of the bag sometime pretty soon. And we'll share it with our people. Um, they've been very interested too, and they've uh, showed interest in some of the titles. So we're in talks with them. Yeah. Um, myself also and my partner, Charles Okwaleke, Play, Play Network. He's, um, he has all the plans. He has, we, have, we have big plans, you know. Um, for, for instance, if you noticed that we, we try to pull the Marvel Universe on... <laughs> Most of this our films from Living in Bondage to uh, Nika to Rattlesnake. So if you notice, there's the character, the antagonist in Living in Bondage, which I played, Richard Williams. Yes. Mm -hmm. He appeared in Rattlesnake in Nika. Okay. Mm. So Fantastic. So we, we, we're creating something, which is going to be something really big story. So it's like, you know, that Marvel Universe thing where you have the actor in different films and then there's, there's now a meeting point of, you know, in somewhere along the line. So there's that in the, um, in the making. And, oh, that mm -hmm. sounds good. And yeah. there's also Andrew Dosumu. Have yes. you, do you, the, have the, you the met director. him? Yes, the director. the director. yes. Are you going to collaborate with him in the future? He, he was uh, selected as well. But of course. Yes. I mean, he's that, based that in New York. Uh, he's a friend of mine, yes. Andrew Dosumu. Yes. yes. I, I, I don't, I don't know, honestly, I don't know. Because he did uh, George, Mother George or something. He did really, really well. Mother George. Yeah, something oh. about... 
I've not seen this that. Yeah, I'll, I'll send it to you. I'll send feature, you a trailer. Please. It's a, a feature? beautiful feature. Oh, beautiful lovely. Feature. So that's a great collaboration you guys yes, can work I with. Know of, I know of uh, Andrew. Andrew. I know and, of Andrew. He's the, the meticulous director. And yeah. of, you know, mm. it's been there for, for forever. So yes, coming to him, that was well deserving. Yes. Um, about us working together, of course. I mean, um, it all depends on what we have on ground or what we have, the titles that we have, how we're going to put it together, how we're going to make it work. You know right. what I'm saying? Right. Yes. Oh, that's, that's thank cool. you very right, much, Mr. No, I hope the next time we talk thank to you, you you're OG. going to come here with your Oscar trophy. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> claim it. Claim it. I claim it. All right, I claim then. it. Thank Good you luck. very much. Thank, thank you, too. You. Thank you for having me.